Snowflake just released their latest quarterly figures, a beat across the board, extremely good execution and growth from the company. Now remember at the start of the year, it wasn't that great, right? With Snowflake, guidance was quite weak, then a change in CEO as well, and everybody made the same conclusion, right? Oh, guidance is going to be sandbagged, so it's going to be quite easy for the new CEO that comes in to beat those numbers. And guess what? It's exactly what has happened. Now, at the time of making this video, the stock is up 18.4% after hours, but as you can see, year to date, the stock is still going to be very, very much red. Overall, this is not a cheap company, right? Despite the huge acceleration, this is still not a cheap company. You're paying a premium because, well, it is a company that is growing fast, right? 25%, 26% year over year a growth for fiscal 2025. And it's expected to stay above 20% for the coming fiscal years. And then EPS is taking a hit this year because of the major investments that they've been making. But then... Fiscal year 26 and fiscal year 2027, over 50% year over year growth for EPS. And so while right now the Ford PE seems quite high, I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem quite high. It is quite high at 192.8 times. You are well going to cut that number quite quickly if you continue to grow above 50% each and every year. Now, Snowflake has been a Wall Street darling since it went public right now before the updated price targets. The average analyst price target sits at $164, representing, well, represented 27% upside from the price it was before it reported earnings. Now, well, now it's much closer to the $153 that we're trading at right now. And so let's discuss the numbers for Snowflake. In this video, I will make an NVIDIA one as well. But since everybody's talking about NVIDIA, I thought we're going to start the evening with the Snowflake figures and then NVIDIA. And then probably tomorrow, we'll start the day with PIN Duo Duo's number for those that are interested in those stocks. Hint, I'm extremely interested in those stocks, especially going into 2025. I'll explain in another video. Now, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we are well on our way to reach 60,000 subscribers. So thank you very much for all the support. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So as always, let's first start with a quick summary and overview by Brett Freeman, stock market nerd on X. So as you can see, a bit across the board, did miss the $111 million free cash flow estimate by $24 million. But all the rest, overall product revenue, revenue, all beat, even Q4 guidance a beat as well. So yeah, a pretty clean quarter by Snowflake. They also did announce a partnership with Anthropic. So Snowflake and Anthropic signed a multi-year strategic partnership to deliver Anthropic's industry-leading cloud models to customers in Snowflake Cortex AI. For those of you that have tried the latest one, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, let me know what you think about that. I've seen some videos and to be honest, looks quite, quite good. All right, so product revenue increased 29% year over year to just over $900 million. Net revenue retention rate of 127%. So that's flat quarter over quarter. That's pretty positive because this is already quite a good number to start with and to finally maybe stop the bleeding there. That's very, very nice. Plus they're growing their customer base. So that's up 20% year over year. Customers with a product revenue that is greater than $1 million increased 25% year over year to now 542. Then with regards to Forbes Global 2000 customers that increased 8% year over year, I believe that's been growing 8% each and every quarter for the last three quarters or so. So that's nice. Snowflake marketplace listing is up 26% year over year, just shy of 3,000 and a net promoter score of 67. So let's dive a little bit deeper. We can see that this is a company that is growing quite quickly, but of course, as you grow your revenue more and more, the growth rates, unlike with Nvidia here, the growth rates are decelerating a little bit. With regards to free cash flow, it's basically going to be flat, right? It's going to be flat right now, but then we see a solid reacceleration or that's the expectations, right? That's the expectations for fiscal 26 and 2027. And as you can see, product revenue and professional services and other revenue, this is basically what's been happening throughout the last four and a half years or so. So product revenue since Q4 2019 has grown close to 8,000%. 
and professional revenue has grown close to 700% since then. As for net revenue retention rate, it's still nice, right? 127%, but you can clearly see that previously when the company was maybe a bit smaller, I mean, not maybe, it was smaller, well, it was much, much higher. And this was basically the fear of the market, right? We've seen that number go down, down, down each and every quarter. The market didn't know, are we finally stopping the bleeding? What's going on here? So it does seem like 127 could be the bottom for now. And in the meantime, they continue to add more and more customers. As you can see, customers have increased by 343% since Q4 2019 to now 10,618 customers. We've also seen a nice jump quarter over quarter with regards to Forbes Global 2000 customers, right? Previously, Q1, Q2, not much growth here, but Q2 to Q3, that's a bigger jump. What we've also seen is a major jump year over year over 50% growth in remaining performance obligation or RPO, right? To now $5.732 billion and total customers with over a million dollars in product revenue, as we've seen before, is now at 542 and that continues to go up and up and up. As for a guidance, so they expect now product revenue growth of 29%. At the start of the year, guidance was closer to 24% year over year growth, which was clearly not good enough, but like we've seen, well, guidance was sent back, new CEO coming in, and so it makes it easier for him to beat and raise, and that's exactly what has happened because now fiscal year 2025 guidance sits at 29%, also non-GAAP product gross margin sits at 76% and not 75%, non-GAAP operating margin is also up to 5%, I believe that was closer to 3%, so yeah, much, much better right now. Non-GAAP adjusted free cash flow margin is still the same at 26%. And so right now, looking at the chart, well, it's been quite clear that since the lows here back in early September, the stock has had solid momentum week in, week out, right? You can see the stock going up and up and up and up, slowly but surely, right? Over the 20, over the 50 day moving average, RSI is showing that momentum. And now we're going to be well above the 200 day moving average, which sits at $136.7, so quite comfortably, above that. RSI is going to be higher as well, but I don't think we're going to be overbought just yet, unless of course in the next coming days, this stock continues to go up and up and up. As you can see, this year started to well, much better sentiment for the company and the stock as well. I mean, look at where we started the year around these prices right here, 190. We started the year quite good, right? It went to $234. But since then, well, since that first earnings report, the stock just went down and down and down and down. And now we're making our way back up. If you bought here, you got some cheaper shares of a company that is now performing much better than before and expected to perform better as well because guidance has been raised yet again. So yeah, I have a small position in Snowflake. I think I'll take my profits because it's still small. Like I said, this was a short-term thing. In this case, it did work out. Still a very, very good company, but like I said, small position in the portfolio. I rather put it in cash and then see what happens. I'll, I'll make some strategic moves for 2025. I'll update you in the portfolio videos on Sunday. So overall, that's about it. Do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.